One of the most subtle changes in modern football has been the evolution of how each position is interpreted, and a player's role is no longer a position, but a function within the team. This couldn't be more evident from what we are seeing with the fullback. While they are all placed in the same category, their function under every manager is vastly different. To understand why, we're going to be taking a look at the tactical advantages of a modern fullback, and how some managers in Europe are benefiting by giving their fullbacks less instructions. To better understand how managers are transforming what it means to be a fullback, we first need to understand how we got here in the first place. The word fullback dates back to the early 20th century, when the most common formation was the 2-3-5. Throughout history, the fullback had always been recognized as a defender, initially the last line of defense, and slowly transitioning into a position out wide as the back four grew in popularity. But the main focus had always been their defensive abilities. Over time, thanks to some truly exceptional fullbacks, the role started to get more recognition, and as defending teams got tighter and tighter at the back, the idea that the wide defenders could now be a viable attacking option was starting to become the norm. It became the standard that fullbacks were no longer just defenders, but were now extremely athletic players with excellent crossing accuracy. More and more teams started pushing their fullbacks forward, and great teams were built on excellent offensive fullbacks. But as with every transformation, defending teams adapted. They started covering the spaces out wide and finding new ways to create counterattacks. This meant the space available had changed once more. No longer was the space always out wide, but gaps started to open up between the lines, and it became easier to go through the middle. To do this, managers like Pep Guardiola started having their fullbacks move into a more central position to facilitate moving between the lines, and thus the inverted fullback started to gain popularity. Fast forward to the modern game, and no two fullbacks are the same, and every manager is finding creative ways of exploiting this player. To help explain why this role has become so important in the modern game, I sat down with football analyst James Alcott. I think the intricacies of football have led to there being no hiding place. And I think because there's no hiding place, the places that were hiding places are actually now areas for advantage. I think now as the pitches get better, people are more confident to look to get overloads and be braver with the ball and how they use the ball and how they w and also I think uh, everyone wants to have the ball. I think that's so important now that you need to find new advantages and fullbacks coming in and getting involved going forward or, or becoming inverted, I think is is a possible advantage. And that's why people are taking it. The key thing James spoke about was this increase in the amount of teams that want to have the ball. And the modern fullback is all about control. To help in my analysis, I use Sockerman's X-Value platform with in-depth metrics on every fullback from over 20 leagues across the globe. You can start a free trial by clicking the link in the description down below and get 25% off yearly subscriptions with code FOOTBALLMETA at checkout. Over the past two decades, the biggest trend in football has undoubtedly been the increasing reliance on build-up and a team's ability to control the tempo of the game. This is because, if successful, a well-organized build-up allows a team to create chances in a much more predictable way, and allows teams to manipulate the right spaces. 20 years ago, when the long ball was still the most common form of attack, it was hard to predict what would happen when the striker went to meet the ball in the air. And these 50-50s meant the ball might get flicked on, it might bounce between the lines, or they could lose the aerial duel to the defender, meaning it was harder to create chances in a pattern that could be replicated in training. With build-up, by having players move into specific positions and completing specific passing sequences, it forces the opposition to cover certain areas, and leave other areas free. For example, a team like Brighton will comfortably complete 10-15 to 15 passes in a specific pattern in order to free up a player between the lines. And this is where the inverted fullback comes into the picture. Made popular by Guardiola during his time at Bayern Munich, the inverted fullback allows a team to overload the center of the pitch and forces the opposition to make a choice. If the fullback is followed into the center, then it frees up direct routes into the winger for easy progression. If the fullback isn't followed, then they can circulate possession straight through the center of the pitch, as the team in possession likely has a big numerical overload. Now, the advantages of the inverted fullback are not only seen during build-up, and even in the opposition's half, this extra player in the center means a team can more easily circulate possession from flank to flank. And when the team lose possession, this extra layer of central cover means it's easier to stop the opposition creating a quick counterattack. To perfectly understand the benefits of the inverted fullback, there's no better example than the Trent Alexander-Arnold experiment at Liverpool. 
Last season, Liverpool's biggest downfall was their inability to stop opposition counterattacks, often getting caught out as Alexander Arnold would push up on the flank and leave acres of a space at the back. However, towards the end of the season, Jurgen Klopp adopted a slight positional change, and rather than overlapping on the flank, Trent would now move into a more central position. This gave Liverpool more defensive cover with an extra central player, but more importantly, it opened up the pitch for Trent who now had more space to use his incredible passing range to pick out the players ahead of him. No longer was Trent providing assists from crosses, but he was now a lot more involved in the team's build-up, completing more line-breaking passes and switches in play. This difference is evident when comparing Trent's past two seasons, with a much higher expected threat from passes and carries, showing this more progressive mentality on the ball. So the inverted fullback is used as a way of overloading the center and controlling the tempo of the game. But as we mentioned earlier, no two fullbacks are the same and their use cases under every manager are vastly different. For example, take Liverpool's Trent Alexander-Arnold and Arsenal's Alexander Zinchenko. While they both invert into the center, their function within the team is completely different. Zinchenko's movement inside is often used as a decoy. If he's followed, then it frees up space for the winger. If he's not followed, then he now has space to receive the ball. In possession, Zinchenko is more likely to look for short, simple passes in close proximity, rotating with the rest of the team. On the other hand, with Trent in a central position, his role is much more focused on immediate progression forward, with longer, more dangerous passes. He might lose the ball more often, and is arguably not as press-proof as Zinchenko, but his role in the team is more offensive compared to Arsenal's left-back. In simple terms, Zinchenko operates in a slightly restricted, low-risk, low-reward position, looking to disrupt the opposition with calculated movements, while Trent operates on a wider, high-risk, high-reward role, with longer, more dangerous passes. Yeah, so, so if you think of, think of like um, three bar charts uh, in terms of what these players want to do. So for both, you've got Zinchenko and Trent. You've, you've got long passes, you've got... Um, recycling, you've got dribbling through the lines or something, or, or, or progressing the ball, right? Zinchenko, I think his mindset is, okay, let me see what's kind of happening here. I'm okay at all three. So, okay, which one's the right one for right now? With Trent, Trent is looking for a through ball. <laughs> like, he does, he's not going, it's right up there. And then the other two is like, well, I guess if I can trot forward a little bit, then fine. So that is the huge difference between Zinchenko and, and Trent. This style is a direct reflection of both managers' philosophy. Arteta comes from a positional play school of thought, and so wants to dominate the game with precise passes moving up the pitch in a controlled way. And so Zinchenko is used to serve this function. On the other hand, Jurgen Klopp's style is a lot more heavy metal, controlling the game with constant pressure and quick attacks. And Trent's longer passing range is perfectly suited for this system. But the difference in function doesn't end there. And as we mentioned at the start of the video, some managers are taking the idea of the inverted fullback to the next level. Some managers in Europe are benefiting by giving their fullbacks a less restricted role. And one player that could be a sign of things to come can be seen with Gutierrez at Girona. As defending teams have slowly learned how to deal with inverted fullbacks, it's no longer the surprising rotation it once was. And the spaces are starting to change once more. In an interview last season, Napoli's head coach Spalletti stated that spaces are no longer found between the lines, but are now found between the players. And the idea of overloads and tight combinations between players is gaining momentum. With Gutierrez, while he starts as the left back, his positioning is completely free, usually rotating forward between the lines, or even dropping deep and helping as a double pivot, with the main focus being creating overloads wherever it's needed. Historically, the fullback on the opposite flank of the attack would be used to provide defensive cover, but by allowing him to join the attack and shift to the other flank, then it can very quickly create huge numerical overloads and makes his movements hard to predict. Girona are a team that can very quickly find tight combinations on one side of the pitch before quickly and unexpectedly finding players away from the pressure and with space to push forward. This free roll does however come with its risks and Girona concede a lot of chances from counterattacks whilst also not having the best defensive consistency, but their attacking output is certainly making up for it. A very similar pattern is starting to emerge with Serie A leaders Inter, with their wingback Di Marco being a huge reason behind their success. While in a slightly different position to a fullback, as a wingback his main responsibilities have been to overlap on the flank and provide crosses into the box, 
But in recent matches, in moments where Inter are moving down the right flank, even he sometimes moves into these more central positions to create overloads. For example, in this clip here against Juventus. This is slightly less risky compared to how Girona used Gutierrez, as Inter's back three does provide more defensive cover. These rotations serve as an excellent example of how modern positional systems are starting to become more fluid as they adapt to the changing defensive landscape. All these examples serve as a way of showing that in modern football, every single position needs to be used effectively. And the most ignored positions from 20 years ago have now become some of the most important. It's interesting to see how subtle changes can make a big difference over time. And I'm curious to know what position do you think will be completely different in 10 years time? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. One thing I would say about the fullbacks as well is I think we may go down a road where, so Pedro Porro scored a great goal in the FA Cup recently. And I feel like long sort of shot specialists could return in a big way. I think if you've got someone like a Pedro Porro and he gets into a certain range, it's one where in a Man City side with Pep, as he always used to say, it's like he would want you to recycle that. But I think we might go down a road where, you know, a Roberto Carlos as an inverted fullback would have been perfect because you, if he gets the ball in that area, if you know that this guy's going to have a shot of high quality from 40 yards out and it's going to have top spin and it's going to probably dip and it's going to be very difficult for the goalkeeper the rest of the team can, can kind of go and, and be ready for anything else that can happen. If you enjoyed this video, then why not check out this video on Thiago Motta and how his rotations are some of the most exciting in the league. As always, if you enjoyed this content, then please leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.